Hello, welcome to Mark D Maker. My name is Mark Taylor. Today we're going to be talking about cutting out blanks. Now a blank is simply a block of wood that's been cut out into a shape, a side profile and a top profile. And it'll give you a very square looking whatever you want to carve. It's going to look square and you're going to draw a center line around it and carve to the round. So, I'm going to show you how to do that. First, I'm going to talk a little bit about the wood I use. It's basswood, and basswood is typically the wood that wood carvers will go to to carve. It's considered a hardwood, but there's very little grain to it. There, there is a grain to it, but very little, and it's easy to carve and even easier, it's easy to carve across. Um, it's the preferred wood. For wood carvers. Now basswood got its name basswood because it's an American Indian name. Bass mean binding or, or, or wrapping. What they would do with the bass tree is they would cut it down when it was about that big around, fairly young tree, and, and beat it. Beat that bark until it became loose and then they would kind of peel it like a banana. They go through a process of putting it into a lake or a stream uh, and, and letting nature kind of take its course for a little while and, and, the, and the process would continue and they eventually end up with a very fibrous cord bass. And they would use that to tie their teepees together or, or sew clothing or, or whatever they were doing tying meats up to, to cook them. So that's how we got our name Basswood from the linden tree. Sometimes people would just call it American linden wood. Um, I like basswood. So come on over to the bench. Let's take a look at the patterns and get started. All right so what I'm going to cover is carving out uh, or cutting out two different types of blanks. A little character, this guy, this block of wood, and this bird. And for that we're going to be using this block of basswood. Now when doing miniatures you can actually use a scroll saw. I used a scroll saw to cut out these little miniatures. Um, this, this eagle was actually a finished piece and my cat knocked it off a high shelf and uh, Broke the leg, so it's back in the workshop getting repaired. A little cardinal uh, is from the miniature book. Both both of these are from that miniature book that I showed in uh, Patterns 101. Uh, but it's a it's a good book, and the uh, the patterns are really nice. So on this particular one. <clears throat> What you, what you always want to do is make sure you have a 90 degree cut along the bottom. If you're going to use uh, the feet <clears throat> along the bottom as a reference, which I know uh, I've done in the past, some carvers do all the time, you just need to make sure that this is a 90 degree angle here so everything lines up. Um, now what I will do uh, for this, it will definitely fit through my saw like so, Maybe, maybe not. I don't know if I have that much clearance this way. So what I will do is just draw a line right here and I will cut that. And while I'm doing that, I'll cut that probably on the table saw. It's a fast and easy, just one pass here. I'll flip it around, do a cross cut that way. Then it, that way I know I'm nice 90 degrees. Uh, you don't need a table saw to do it. You could just use a handsaw or, or, or whatever, but you want um, to be able to get that as flat and true. So when you're going through like this, it sits 90 degrees as you're cutting out this guy. Here's a little trick I use. You can see that I drew a line from his heel, from this particular heel to this particular heel the same foot on them, 
drew a line across the bottom of his heel and I will hold it up to a window. You get a nice big window during daylight hours and hold it up, fold the paper over and line up those lines to make sure your crease is right at 90 degrees so everything will come out properly. Um, I also use daylight on a window to trace something. So if you, you have something on a piece of paper that you want to trace, lay another piece of paper over it, tape it up, and just use the uh, window as a light box. All right. So I won't need any any more than than maybe right about here. So I've marked that on the board here. <clears throat> And I will chop that off on the table saw. All right. <clears throat> and for here, I'm just going to make sure I get that nice, flat, fresh cut edge right up against here. And make sure I can get a nine, 90 degree cut. Make sure I leave enough for my character. We'll do it. Let that stay down until it stops rotating. All right, I simply use this Super 77 and just spray it. You can spray it on either surface of this or you could spray it on the back of your pattern. And we'll just stick this on here. And I've seen people use all kinds of stuff. I've seen people use white glue, PVA glue. I've seen people use contact cement. This by far is the easiest, but if you use white glue, you, you wet it down with water until it's like a milky consistency and you would coat both surfaces, the wood and the back of the paper. The paper is going to curl on you though, and then you'll have to flatten it out and uh, it'll work. I've seen it, ha I've, I've seen folks do it. It'll work, whatever you have. So I cut this block for the black cat chickadee blank. <clears throat> I ran it on the band saw or the uh, table saw to make one end flat, chop both ends off. So I got 90 degrees on either end. And it looks like if I line these lines up here with the tail, that that's going to fall perfectly in line. So let's get the glue and get that mounted as well. All right, so we got the line that comes down here and wraps around this way. And we're going to use that with the tail. And so this is my smooth side and this is my smooth side. There is a little ding here in the wood, but that's not going to show. That'll be part that's Hit it with a little spray there. Looking pretty good. Top of the pattern. We're going to line it right up with that line. Sockets right down the middle. Good thing if you don't get this placed, you can just peel it right back up. It's not super strong, at least to begin with. That yeah, looks pretty good. 
So we got our, our top there, our side there, and we're all ready to cut it out. So on this saw, I actually have a blade that's too wide to make the tight curves required of this plank. But I wanted to show you that it's not impossible. It just takes a little bit of work with it. So you watch as I come to the curves, I will stop, back up, take another bite, back up, take another bite, just nibbling away, trying to get enough space for that wide blade to ride around in. And you should be able to back that blade up successfully. Just have patience and taking some more nibbles, trying to get that to, to curve. And it, it just won't, it's too wide of a blade. So I take it from the other side And once again, start this nibble, nibble, nibble until I get enough space so that blade will twist in that narrow gap. And I still got a little bit of space on top of that uh, bird's head that needs to come off, so I'll just nibble that away. And success. There's the top. And we'll go on the bottom of the bird using the same techniques now I will switch over when I go to do the character carving to a, uh, a delta bandsaw that I have set up with a very thin blade and you'll see the difference Almost done, and there we go. That'll ride in that little sled that's cut there. And there's the top pattern. Just tape it together. We're ready to cut the top. Now I like using scotch tape simply because I can see through it. Uh, you can use painter's tape or masking tape. I've seen people use hot glue to glue their blanks back together again and some people actually don't cut all the way through they leave a couple of tabs of wood and they'll come back and and cut that I just found this to be the easiest way the uh, scotch tape doesn't seem to bother the blade it doesn't gum it up or stick it up or anything like that Sorry for the hood being in the way there. Now I learned a, a little lesson right here that that angle between the bird's tail and the body is such an acute angle that you do have to do a relief cut there. And you'll see I do it immediately on the other side instead of trying to fumble around with it. Bunch of little nibble cuts here. This is the the part where the angle of the the roundness of the the head is is the tightest. So it's uh, definitely the the hardest part. <clears throat> Here's this cut relief cut there. Relief cuts are good, especially this is the uh, on the top angle. Being the sides are already cut out, I don't have to worry about ruining the pattern on the other side. This is the final cut. Little nibbles until I can get that blade running in there at the proper angle.
Now at this point, my hand is holding it together. I've basically cut all the tape off. And those little tight angles were kind of giving me a hard time on this blade, but you can still do it. Now see, I'm using the back of the blade there, or the, the sides of the teeth as a rasp. And there's the blank for the bird. And we'll move on to the little character. I'm just going to go right across the bottom of the feet, and the character here. Now you can see it's dramatically slower with the fine teeth. But as you'll see, you gain a lot of control and you can get into uh, much tighter areas with much tighter curves with this little tiny blade. But you just have to take your time. Little nibble cuts. And you don't have to do too many because that blade is so narrow. Couple of cuts there, little nibbles, and right around the corner. Almost as tight as a scroll saw. A scroll saw, though, you can turn a scroll saw right around on itself. But uh, with a scroll saw, you only have about two inches, maybe two and a quarter inches of clearance. And uh, this is thicker than that. Now you'll see that this piece comes out just like a puzzle piece. And this is a way that you can cut puzzles. I've done them be before. And I'll show them on a, on a video in the future. Now on this guy, I'm just cutting right through his, uh, his mustache and his eyebrows that overhang his face because uh, I'm going to make this guy a, a little more clean cut. All right, so you can see how he kind of goes back together again. We will tape them up and we'll be ready to cut the uh, side profile. On the final profile that you cut out, you don't have to worry about saving any pieces. As they fall off, you can just get rid of them but you may have to tape it again because you 
as you go down one side, you'll cut all the tape loose. And uh, you'll have to go back and, and re-tape it to keep the other side on. And that's what I'm doing here. Retape and we'll go at it again. Little nibble cuts here so I can get that blade turned. Couple more little nibbles there and right around the corner. Now this does, especially with this really fine tooth narrow blade, it produces a very, very fine powdery sawdust. So you really want to wear a mask. Uh, getting this stuff in your lungs is not good for you, no matter what kind of wood it is. There we go. Brush a little sawdust off of them and uh, that's what it looks like. And so there we go. Cutting out blanks. Getting them prepared for wood carving. Join me in a later video where I'll carve these. I'll do them all the way. Well, I hope you enjoyed the video. Please like, share, subscribe, and I'll see you next time.